Hey guys, welcome to my second video. I want to start by saying thanks. To be honest, I wasn't expecting any subscriber for my first video. But by the time I'm recording this, I have 47 and more than 700 likes. It motivates me to continue with my side projects. I have to admit that making the videos is hard. I guess it's mainly because I feel the pressure to make a long video with a lot of details regarding what I'm doing. But I've been watching more devlogs channels lately and I see that some of them even put 3 minutes long video just to show that they are still moving forward. So I'll try not to put so much pressure on my shoulders and just keep doing my best. Doesn't matter if I have 2 minutes of content or 7. Most of my days I like to start by exercising a bit. Usually it's just a light session so my muscles start moving. Either I go for a run with Lima or I train at home. Since I'm doing a devlog of my side projects in my free time, I thought why not to show you everything around this. I need to start my day like this because if not I can't focus properly or I feel tense during the day. If you have a similar problem like me, I highly recommend to start your day with some movement. Even a small walk in the sun makes my day so much better. This last week, I add Swift Data to my app. For those who don't know, Swift Data is a new database that we can use from iOS 17 forward. I decided to use because I want the game session to be as smooth as possible, and I think having a combination between database and memory will give me what I need. Also, I want to learn something new with every new app I develop. After walking Lima and doing a small breakfast, I'm ready to start my day. I started a project and one of the first things I did was to structure it. One of the common things most developers do nowadays is modularizing your project. In backend for example you have microservices. In iOS projects you have SPM. I decided to create three main layers. The first layer is the core packages. Here we have main components that will be used across multiple features. We have UI package here which is just view components that I can reuse in the app. Here you also have the icons and colors from Figma. We have our dependency injection package that handles the registering and resolving of dependencies for our features. We have our storage package that for now handles our basic CRUD operations. And finally we have a core package. It only has extensions and main objects. The second layer is the features itself. Here I have the features the user interact with. Right now, I'm developing the game, but we could have features like Profile, Home... It's important to emphasize that the communication between packages should be vertical. It means that features layer can depend on core layer, but there shouldn't be a dependency between features. However, there's times where we need to share part of business logic from one feature to other. Like for example, maybe the game has the data of how many points the user have in history of all games, and we want to show that in the profile. What we will do is to expose part of the business logic through a specific API package. The protocols will be public, but the implementation will be hidden inside the package itself. And we will use our dependency injection package to inject the proper implementation without exposing any object in particular. Final layer is how everything connects. The app layer, let's say. It's basically the main app target in the Xcode project. And it's in charge of presenting and connecting different features together. Now that I finish with this, I think I can start with this project. Actually, there is something else we need to decide. I know, when can we start coding? Which architecture do we want to use for this app? I decided to go for clean architecture. Take it easy, I know what you might say. This architecture for one solo project? That's crazy, right? Despite everything you could say about it, I find that using this architecture gives a lot of benefits, like making components easy to test, refactoring is simple, and I'm talking from experience here. The app becomes easy to maintain and flexible to change. Yes, because you know where to locate anything you want, like business logic, just check the use cases. Cache or database problem, check the repositories. Do we want to change any library we use in the data layer? Domain doesn't care about this, we can do it. It's easy to split tasks between a team of multiple developers, which is not my case obviously. Some cons that I found, there is a lot of boilerplate, even for simple screens. You might duplicate models in the layers. 
And this is probably what I hate the most about this. Sharing code between the features becomes complex. It might be business logic code, it might be models between the features, maybe you want to create a core package models, or maybe you want the features to be as independent as possible. This will depend on the decisions you make with your team. But the main reason why I'm choosing this architecture is because we are using it in my daily job and I want to get better at this. I want to try new things and see if I can come up with new ideas for my team. Now that we got this out of the way, let's f call it. Adding Swift data to a clean architecture project was a bit harder than expected. I think I need a break. Besides working on the app these days, I also went to a conference happening here in Prague, MDEP Camp. There were a lot of interesting talks like this one about Swift UI from Chris. If you haven't seen his content, I highly recommend checking his videos in his website. There was also this talk about hacking an iOS app, which was quite eye-opening. I prefer not to worry you about the contents of this one. Okay, let's finish this video. If you didn't know, Swift Data under the hood stored the data in SQLite. So if you want to see or update any content in your app, you can just download any SQLite visualizer like this one I found online. Then print the location of the SQLite by using this extension and open the file. It comes handy when you want to debug if the data is being saved correctly. I had a bug where I was duplicating the data and I was receiving multiple times questions that the user already answered. I decided to sync my local database of questions with my server and whenever I add new questions, delete or update all questions in the server, I will make an incremental sync with the device. I didn't come up with a sync strategy so far how the client will receive the data, or how the server will know what to give for syncing, this will be the topic for the next video. But regarding how to present the questions to the user during the game, I decide to use only local data, so it's as fast as possible. I have two options to do this. Every time the user answers a question, I will fetch the next one from the database, either one by one or maybe in small groups. Second one, before the game starts, I can fetch part or all the questions I have locally and put it on memory. Both approaches have pros and cons. The first one might be slower depending on how often you make calls to your database. This operation is not cheap. The second one has the risk of losing memory objects if the system needs it, but I think this is quite unlikely to happen. So for now, I'll go with this approach and I'll try to make some stress testing later. I even asked ChatGPT what could be the best approach and it kinda recommended me the memory one. So let's hope for the best here. Now that Swift Date is done, this is how the game's looking so far. I hope I'll see you in the next video, when we connect to Firebase and create the sync strategy for the offline mode. As always, if you got this far, consider leaving a like or subscribe to my channel if you like the progress. It keeps me motivated to continue working on side projects. That's it for now. See ya!